Tonight, even more revelations about Apple's new wearables, if you can believe that. TwitPic is shutting down, and they're blaming Twitter. And the U.S. Mail will deliver Amazon groceries. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 165 for Thursday, September 4th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and we're just going to jump right into a bit of an Apple frenzy fest with our friend, reporter from Gig Ohm, Kif Leswing. Hello, Kif. Hello. How's it going? It's going all right. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing, we're doing really well. Now, uh, you wrote a story along with many others about some new revelations for this reported iWatch and, of course, new iPhones ahead of next Tuesday's Apple event. The event is set in stone. Apple has not said anything else. In fact, they as they always do, famously have said nothing. But we're, you know, we're getting into the final days. So conspiracy theories are, are running wild. What are the new details, at least about the wearables? Well, uh, the iWatch is going to come in um, two sizes. There were actually two stories that came out uh, today, uh, one from the New York Times and one from the Wall Street Journal. And they both basically corroborate each other. There are going to be two sizes, and they're both going to have um, NFC pairing which basically means you can tap to, pay, uh, to pair it with either an iPhone or what's more likely um, the, uh, the uh, uh, a payments, a cash register or something uh, that is connected to your credit card. That's what's the most exciting thing for a lot of people. Now, the idea of a flexible display that might be in two different sizes, I mean, is that just sort of the obvious, hey, if you're a man or a woman, you might have a larger or a smaller wrist, or is it, is it, is it, is it cosmetic? What do you think is the thinking behind this? I, I personally believe uh, that, that with at least these wearable wristwatches or smartwatches, uh, we don't even know, really know what people prefer uh, in the way they hang, in the way uh, they're used. It's really a wide open space. So, yeah, I, I suspect that, you know, uh, women and men do have different preferences of the size of the jewelry they wear on their wrist. And Apple is totally smart uh, if they do end up releasing two different sizes. Now, as far as a wearable that has NFC pairing capabilities, I mean, Apple has really not gotten into the financial market up to this point at all. There are obviously third-party services that, that that use Apple hardware in order to achieve that goal. Is the wearable the, 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 the right place to push this out? You know, Apple's had some interesting uh, PR lately about uh, privacy and obviously finances kind of kind of are at the forefront of that. Is now the right time to figure out how a wearable will help us not have to pull out our wallets? Well, the thing is, um, sometimes when I get uh, when I get coffee at Starbucks, mm -hmm. um, Starbucks actually has a really well developed, you know, not quite tap to pay, but a system where you can pay on your phone, and and people do feel very self conscious when they pull out their phone. I, I hear people apologize <laughs> and say and have to explain it every time. Uh, but if Apple really were to make it as simple as you know tapping your wrist, I could see it being adopted widely. Um, of course, Apple's cache of, of credit cards is kind of like Chekhov's gun. People have been saying for years and years and years that it has hundreds of millions of credit cards on file. And the question was when it was going to try to, to use those uh, to leverage them. So um, it's not that much of a surprise. And it does give the smartwatch a purpose. Uh, because when you look at it, competitors like Android Wear, um, their notifications right now, that's the main thing they do. And I'm not sure that anyone really wants that. What about so, the, the idea that uh, we may get, uh, we, we may be able to see these wearables next week. We might, we, we might learn about all of the ideas, maybe even pre-orders, but that no customer would get either of these iWatches 
if that's indeed what they're going to be called, until after the holiday season, until 2015. Is that just a supply chain issue? Because I can't imagine that Apple is happy about that. No, I mean, with the original iPhone, it, it was announced, you know, a few months before it went on sale. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, first of all, because, you know, Apple's legendary secrecy, they have a, an office where you have to scan your retina or whatever to even get in. Um, at some point, the cat's got to be out of the bag. And if they were making, you know, 10 million of these, the cat would be out of the bag. So I think there, there are two reasons why they're announcing it. Uh, months before they go on sale. Uh, first of all, to get developers on board so that there's actually software you can use when it actually does come out. And second, because it, a lot of people have been waiting for it. And if they think they have, you know, what is a prototype ready to go into production, then it's time for them to show it off. This is a new product. This isn't like the iPhone 6. Speaking of the iPhone 6, obviously rumors abound that there will be uh, two iPhone 6s, one that's larger than the iPhone 5S that I just happen to have that I'm sitting on and and then a even larger iPhone. Now, the latest today that I read about is including a one handed mode. And I guess that's presumably because if you've got a much larger iPhone, the idea is that it's hard to use with one hand, which sometimes we have to do. How is that going to work, though? I, I, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's one of the surprises we're going to see. I read that tidbit and that came from... Um, from Brian Chen in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. um, and and the thing is, I haven't seen many effective one-handed modes on Android devices, which often have, you know, five and a half inch screens. So I I really hope that the UI masters at Apple have have some new ideas to bring to this. I, I do. Um, you know, I mean, I... We saw I, the, the we saw the curved edge from the what was it the, uh, the Samsung Note, Note edge. edge yeah, yeah it's not, it's which not is gonna be like that <laughs> yeah you know and, and one of the things that uh, some of my colleagues and I said right away is well right away that forces you to hold the phone one specific way and yeah. if it's large which the Note is you know it's phablet sized for some people that it that that seems so awkward. Yeah, I actually uh, got to get my hands on the edge, and I actually really like it. For my hand, I'm right-handed, my thumb's there. I, I don't think it's a totally crazy idea. But um, when you look at the people who uh, use the phone on the subway, when I look at people using these these really big phones, a lot of them, you know, are, are women who put it in their handbags and always use it with two hands. So mm -hmm. it's like a phone that doesn't that, that's not even trying to appeal to them. So I, I don't know. Um, he, Apple actually has an interesting um, keyboard split feature on iOS. I don't know if a lot of people know about this. It came out on the iPad. But if you're using your iPad with two hands and you want to type on an iPhone size keyboard, you can pull it apart. Mm -hmm. And and if I had to guess, the one handed mode is going to be something like that. Something Although. Like Something yeah. along those lines, yeah, of a keyboard. Well, we know that Apple is streaming the event live, uh, which is good news for those of us who will be covering it from afar. Uh, if you go to the uh, webpage for the event, it shows a countdown clock right now. I don't know. Kim Cook just tweeted that out. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 Kif, I don't know. Best bet? Do you, do you think everything that we're hearing about now will will come true? I know I'm. I'm that that is. You never really know with Apple, but you think we're getting a couple wearables? You think we're getting those two iPhones? Yeah, I I mean, I'm not... There, there are people who just handicap Apple, you know, probabilities or whatever. I think it's, it's looking pretty sure that we're at least getting um, one new iPhone. Whether the bigger iPhone goes on sale, uh, you know, 10 days after the event, I don't know. And, and... I'm pretty sure that Apple is going to announce it's it's wearable. Um, one of the funny things I brought up Tim Cook's Twitter again. One of the funny things that you saw uh, when uh, Twitter started to show favorites in your timeline is that Tim Cook favorited Aaron Levy's tweet. And Aaron Levy is the CEO of Box, and Aaron Levy said uh, basically that um, you know. Uh, we know we're going to buy whatever Apple comes out with. Let us pre-order it now. And Tim Cook was like, favorite. So, <laughs> um, so I'm Reading pretty sure. Reading the tea leaves gonna, of Twitter. Yeah, yeah so I'm pretty sure fun. we're going we're gonna to see that. Well, thanks so much to Kif Leswing, who writes for Gig Ohm, for joining us here on TN2 on this lovely Thursday. And Kif, let folks know where people can uh, read more of your work. Uh, GigOhm.com. Sounds good. Thanks so much for being here.
Thank you for having me. Lots more coming up. Uh, I think you know where all the wires are outside. We've got some pictures from over 100 years ago that show a very different scene in certain cities. Before we get to our tech feed, though, let's take a moment to thank ZipRecruiter for sponsoring this episode of TN2. If you are hiring for your company, do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? You might but you're not using ZipRecruiter, so you're probably doing it wrong. With ZipRecruiter, you can post to 50-plus job sites all at once. Posting the job is obviously really, really important. But then you've got to filter through all these responses that you receive. Then you have to narrow down to the best candidates. Then you have to take the time to talk to these candidates. At ZipRecruiter, you can view and download and print and share resumes with your team. You can screen candidates the easy way, ask them real-world questions, and identify who's qualified and who isn't. You can post once and just watch these candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. No more juggling emails or calls to your office. Nobody likes that. You can screen your candidates quickly. You can rate them, and then you can hire the right person fast. That's really your goal. Right? You just want to hire the right person, and that's what ZipRecruiter is so good for. It's been used by over 250,000 businesses. People love it. Right now, our viewers and listeners of TN2 can try out ZipRecruiter. For a free four-day trial, just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash T-N and the number two. And we thank ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. On to our tech feed now. Longstanding Twitter photo service TwitPic has announced that it will shut down on September 25th, citing a demand from Twitter that the company abandon their trademark application, which they filed back in 2009, or risk losing access to Twitter's API. In a blog post, TwitPic's Noah Everett says, quote, Unfortunately, we don't have the resources to fend off a large company like Twitter to maintain our mark, which we believe wholeheartedly is rightfully ours. Therefore, we've decided to shut down TwitPic. The company says that users will be able to export all photos and videos with a feature that will go live in the next few days. Remember when Twitter wasn't considered a big company? A bad, mean, big company? It wasn't that long ago. Amazon and the U.S. Postal Service have already partnered up to deliver goods on Sundays, traditionally not a day that you get many packages. Now, the duo has launched a trial to shuttle insulated containers of meat, dairy, produce, and other groceries to customers in San Francisco. Now, if successful, this test could lead to a broader national rollout. Through its Amazon Fresh unit, Amazon already delivers groceries in its hometown of Seattle, as well as parts of Los Angeles and San Francisco. It's expected to introduce Fresh to additional markets in the coming months, and the Wall Street Journal notes that job openings for produce handlers in Avenel, New Jersey, which is about 25 miles outside of Manhattan, have started to pop up. The Postal Service says that it's testing Amazon Fresh deliveries, quote, to determine if delivering groceries to residential and business addresses would be feasible from an operations standpoint and could be financially beneficial for the organization. Two Silicon Valley veterans are headed to the White House. The Obama administration has officially named Google executive Megan Smith as its next chief technology officer and former Twitter lawyer Alexander McGillivray as deputy U.S. CTO. The U.S. CTO spot was conceived by President Obama back when he was still a candidate. Outgoing U.S. CTO Todd Park is perhaps best known for helping salvage the troubled health care Dot gov project. Now, incoming CTO Megan Smith is an MIT trained mechanical engineer and entrepreneur currently serving as vice president at Google X. Also, for nine years, Smith led the acquisitions that would become Google Earth and Google Maps. New deputy CEO Matt Gillivray is a graduate of both Princeton University and Harvard Law. The White House said that his focus will be on policy matters from so called intellectual property to where big data and privacy intersect. Google has agreed to settle charges and repay $19 million to consumers whose children were allegedly deceived into making mobile purchases through the Android App Store. The Federal Trade Commission found that since 2011, the company made it too easy for children using Android phones to buy items ranging from $0.99 cents to $200 items in kid-marketed games without a parent's permission. 
This is the latest development in the FTC's three-year investigation into software made by Apple, Amazon, and Google that the agency considered deceptful and deceitful and harmful for children. Apple agreed to a $32.5 million settlement last January, and Amazon in July said that it would fight similar charges brought on by the FTC. And now on to another U.S. government agency. It's very government-focused today on TN2. The FCC is currently preparing to close public comments on its net neutrality proposal, and a handful of major Internet companies are organizing a protest to raise awareness. Companies like Reddit, Etsy, Foursquare, Kickstarter, Mozilla, Vimeo, and Pornhub... Yes, Pornhub... ...are just a few services that will observe next Wednesday, that September 10th, as a day of action to showcase net neutrality issues on their sites and urge their communities to contact the FCC and Congress and the White House. The protest is against the potential internet fast lane where ISPs and online services could reach financial deals for better service. The day of action will run through midnight of September 11th, a few days ahead of the FCC comment deadline of September 15th. Finally, a lot of talk about internet highways and potential fast lanes and people are up in arms and we know that they exist, but we don't actually see them, right? They're, they're a series of tubes, I think somebody said that. But remember the olden days when there actually were tubes in the sky from point A to point B? io9.com has a collection of photos of various cityscapes before cables ran underground. These are cityscapes in various cities like Boston and New York and Stockholm. It's kind of fascinating. Electrical wires, telephone wires, telegraph wires. They're all gathered on high poles and it's a mess. God bless fiber. Oh, and down with fast lanes, net neutrality or bust. Yes, we do have opinions here on TN2. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program. It's a good one. Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.